Hi! In this short video, we're going to cover all of the markings you'll encounter in an airport that designate taxiways and what they mean. Knowing what each of these markings mean at an airport can help you navigate the airport. If you've ever heard ATC say something like this, Cessna November Bravo for Delta Golf Mike Romeo Taxi 2 and hold short of runway 26 right by Taxiway Bravo 2 Quebec Bravo 1 2 Quebec Echo Golf Echo 3 Golf Tango Lima 1 Echo 7 Tango Lima 2 Golf Golf Echo 9 -er, Echo Papa Romeo Papa 1 2 Romeo Romeo 1 and we're at a loss to follow those directions. This video combined with part three that covers signage at airfields will help you. It's a pretty dry topic, so I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Before we get started, I wanted to point out a feature that you have in the sim that'll help you if you're struggling with navigating the taxiways, and that's the taxi ribbon. You can turn it on under Options, Assistance, Navigation Aids, and Taxi Ribbon. Once enabled, the sim will draw a path for you to taxi using these blue arrows. Some airports have fairly complex taxiways and can be a challenge to navigate, so this is a nice option for you. I'm going to start this tutorial at a smaller towered regional airport that has a simple set of taxiways for us to follow to get started. Unlike runway markings that are always white, taxiway markings are always yellow. Taxiways always have a center line that consists of a single painted yellow line. Many airports employ an enhanced center line where a taxiway is about to intersect with a runway that consists of a parallel line of dashes on either side of the normal center line, like this. This lets the pilot know they're approaching a runway and that a hold position is about to be encountered. The pilot then knows they're about to stop unless cleared by ATC to proceed. Hold markings typically occur where the taxiway will intersect with the runway and they consist of two solid yellow lines bordered by two dashed yellow lines. The solid yellow lines are closest to the aircraft to indicate that the aircraft is expected to stop or hold at this location until cleared. Aircraft crossing from the other side where the dash line pair is closest to the aircraft are not required to stop. So, just remember if you encounter a hole marker, you need to get clearance to cross the solid double yellow lines first. Another type of hole marker, similar to the runway hole marker, is the movement area marker. They consist of a single solid yellow line bordered by a single dashed yellow line. Movement areas are runways, taxiways, and other areas used for the taxiing, takeoff, and landing of aircraft. Access to the movement areas requires specific approval at tower-controlled airfields. The solid line is on the non-movement side and designates the aircraft holding position. There are two types of taxiway edge markers. The taxiway edge markings that consist of a solid double yellow line are used to mark the edge of the pavement beyond which an aircraft should not proceed since that area of the pavement is not designed to support the weight of an aircraft. As such, many times you won't see edge markings of any type for a taxiway, but in the event that they're present as a solid double yellow line, it's imperative that you don't cross them. The other type of taxiway edge marker is a dashed double yellow line, and this line can be crossed by an aircraft and typically occur around apron or ramp edges. The final type of taxiway ground marking is a set of double yellow lines that are connected like a ladder with sets of double yellow lines. These represent the ILS critical area boundary hold position. The pilot should hold here if directed to by the ATC to prevent the aircraft from interfering with the ILS systems at the airfield. They may also include a large red square painted on the ground before the hold position with the letters ILS painted in white at the hold position. You may also see a sign like this. It indicates you're leaving the ILS critical boundary area. The identifier for a given taxiway may be painted on the ground or on a sign, or there may be none at all. Whereas a runway designation will always start with a number, taxiways always start with a letter. It's typical to see taxiway A, B, C, etc. at the airport. The pilot is presumed to have reviewed the airport chart prior to using the taxiways in order to familiarize themselves with the layout of the airport's taxiways. 
Most airports, but certainly not all, will have these types of signs located around the taxiways and the airfield that delineate the names of the taxiways and runways. Let's take a close look at the airfield KVNY located in Los Angeles, California. You can get these charts from Sky Vector website or the FAA website, and links are provided for these in the description. The airport consists of two runways running parallel to each other. Facing south, we have runway 16 right, and next to that is runway 16 left. As we can see by the dimensions provided by the chart for this airfield, 16 right is 150 feet wide and just over 8,000 feet in length. 16 left is half of those dimensions at 75 feet wide and just over 4,000 feet in length. We can also see what the elevation of the airfield is. This is useful for things such as calculating our top of descent. As you can see, the chart is a wealth of other useful information. If we look at the airfield with a drone view, we can see that 16 right has a runway threshold marker of 12 lines, and that matches what our chart indicates for 150 feet. The smaller 16 left runway has no threshold width indicator. When this visual indicator is missing, it indicates that the runway is typically 75 feet wide or less. Parallel to the runways are the main taxiways Alpha and Bravo. Taxiways that intersect the main taxiways and lead off into the ramp or apron areas where the hangar, tie-down, and maintenance areas are will have the same alpha designation as the taxiway they attach to along with the digit. For example, here we start with Alpha 1 and end with Alpha 5 and finally Alpha Alpha. Double letters like Alpha Alpha hold no significance. They're just taxiway names that the airport designer chose to use. On the other side of the runway pair, we see the name for the Bravo taxiway, starting with Bravo 1 and ending with Bravo 12, and finally Bravo Bravo. What you won't see is mixed Alpha names like Alpha Bravo or Alpha Charlie, etc. You'll also never see taxiways named with the letters India, Oscar, or X-Ray, as these are considered too confusing for pilots as they might think they are runway numbers or indicate a closed runway or taxiway. Taxiways that intersect the main taxiways and lead into the runway areas of the airfield get their own unique letter designation. As you can see, on 16 right we have Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, etc. Note that these extend across both runways and connect taxiways Alpha and Bravo with the exception of the diagonally placed Mike and November taxiways that end at their respective runways instead of providing cross-runway access. Again, checking the airport charts for your departure and arrival airports is highly recommended since these naming schemes can vary slightly between airfields. The one consistent element you will find is that taxiways always begin their name with an alpha character such as Alpha, Bravo, etc., whereas runways always begin with a number that designates the heading of that runway. Taxiway names are typically posted on signs around the airfield instead of on the ground like the runways. Okay, that's it. In the next and final video for this series, I'll go over the signage that you can encounter at the airport, and this will also help you with navigating the taxiways. If you like the video, please give it a like, as that really helps. And until the next video, take care.